This Carvera desktop CNC mill is my new favorite tool in my workshop. Today, I'm here at the Makera factory. Josh, thank you so much for flying me out to you see are, how you do things. You are welcome. This is basically a show war to showcase how many components are in the Carvera machine. So, so you've got, let's see, these are probably sides here. Yes. And is this what slides on the linear shaft here? Yes. Okay. It's a bearing block for the linear yep. shaft. Yeah. This uh, area is mainly for the spindle. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, you can see there is there are a lot of components. Let's go see all of these parts being put together now. This is two man CNC machines. So what kinds of parts do you make on here? Uh, or what are you making right now? We're making the gantry column. Uh, left side and right side. And this is holding up that x-axis? Yes. So this is kind of the frame of the machine. These are your blanks here? Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. raw material. The so 6061 aluminum? Yes. And then what are you making over here? Over here we are making the x-axis beam. And that's what that the spindle carriage rides on. This is aluminum, a custom aluminum Custom profile. extrusion. Yes. So we have some holes for uh, the threads. These, these will eventually be screw holes? Yes. They'll be threaded? Yes. Okay. And do you do these by hand or with the CNC? Uh, we do that by hand over sure. there. I think one thing people often misunderstand about manufacturing in general is that it's not always done by machines. Sometimes yeah. it's yeah. easier to just have things done by people. Yeah, here we cut the door, aluminum. You're starting with a big piece of, of extruded aluminum and then just cutting into blanks. And then and these will get machined? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I think this is a, a manufacturing technique that maybe people in the West are not as familiar with. This whole idea that you can have custom extrusion made, and it's yes. not very expensive to have this made, right? Yeah, like, in China, not very expensive. Yeah. How yeah. much is it to make one ton of a new part like this? In total, I think $5 per uh, Kilogram. Per kilogram. Yes. Five dollars per kilogram at one thousand kilograms. Yeah. And, and then we're drilling holes by hand here. He's got a fixture. This is a, a custom made fixture yeah. for yes. knowing exactly where the holes go. Yeah, we made I love a it. lot of custom fixtures and tools. Yeah. We can do that in the machine, but we find this had to be easier. Sure. Sometimes it's just easier to have a human do it. And those machines, I bet, are, are one of your bottlenecks, right? Yes, you want to yes. keep them busy as much as you can. Yes. And this is a special machine just for making threads. Yes. People have seen the hand tapping, <laughs> yeah, but this makes yeah. it much faster. Yeah, much faster and I think much more accurate yeah. because the uh, structure is uh, to make it more vert verticality. It makes it sure it's perfectly in line Bird, and yeah. not, not off center. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it which is hard when you're doing hand. it by hand. Yeah. yeah. And also this machine can control the caps of the thread. You, oh. you, uh, yeah, yeah. It will automatically turn clockwise and counterclockwise. Oh, yeah. he's just yeah. holding down one button and one it's going button. in and then out and then yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. You guys have tons of different parts here. What is this one for? Uh, this one is for the Y-axis bearing block. Okay. It's a seat for that, for face, okay. face into to the plate. Yep. Oh, you've got your fixtures down here. Okay, wow, you guys have tons of steel fixtures. Okay, so this is the fixture for the part we saw being cut earlier? Yes. Okay, I have to learn more about fixtures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can teach me some things. Yeah, yeah. What's going on here? Because you've got these you've got these at an angle. Yes, right? We need to uh, flip, 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 flip it into an angle to mill, the, mill it uh, with an angle. Okay, you got this at an angle here. Yeah, to what? put the LED light. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've got those really cool lights underneath the lid, yes. so you can see what you're doing. Yes. And that's where they sit. Yeah. All right, let's go over there and look at your, I wanna see the raw material that okay. you guys are using. So this is all your aluminum profiles here. Yes, yeah. And this yes. is how it comes from the aluminum extrusion factory. Yes. So it's what? Three meters? So normally it's a six meters, but there's oh. too long of storage. So we Oh, you cut, cut it here. Oh, okay. And because you've got so many different profiles. How many yeah. different shapes? We got around 10. Okay. 10, Ten different, different shapes. shapes. Yes. You've got squares with holes. You've got triangles with holes. Yes. All sorts of stuff. So you've got a, a CNC lathe here as well. Yes. yes. What are you guys making on this? are making the spindle shell for the automatic two-channel spindle. We don't manufacture all the less things, less components, 
but uh, the spindle shell is very important and uh, yep. need very accurate, so we made it by ourselves. And that way you can control the accuracy. Yes. Is yeah. this the only part you're making on a lathe? Yeah, we have two parts. Both are for the spindle. Got yeah. it. So yeah. you're only Maybe making two. the things in-house on the lathe that you need for accuracy. Yeah. And then you have a bunch more parts you send out? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yes. I think you said earlier you're doing so much on the mills in-house because yes. one, it's a core competency for you, right? Yes. You're making CNC mills, so yes. it makes sense that you do your own CNC milling. Yes. But also yes. it allows you to control for quality yes. a lot better than, yes. than sending it out. Yes. Which is super interesting because a lot of factories do send out all their CNC milling. But you're a little bit of a rarity in the yes. sense that in China yeah. here, you're doing your own milling in-house. Yeah, I think it's a balance between the cost and the quality and yeah. the number of components. Got it. Awesome. So what are you cutting here? You've got a big router table. Yes, we are cutting the sheet plastic on the leaf. Ah, yeah. OK. So you're making this, Is this is like acrylic? Polycarbonate. I thought these were like blow molded or vacuum formed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people think of that. It, it's uh, such a big, like custom piece of plastic. Yeah. So you cut it flat and then what? And then stick three parts together yeah. into one frame. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you're doing, you're bending it yourself? Yeah. You, you bend the okay. middle plate. Where is that happening? Uh, it's happening up there. Okay, yeah, okay, so we'll go there. see that in a sec here. Uh, you didn't make this, did you? Uh, you bought this? Uh, we made this, but we buy the components. Oh! We build it. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, How much do you think this costs to build in China? Uh, 10,000. 10,000 uh, More than, RMB? a little bit more than, yeah. 10, so like 1,500 US. That's a pretty good deal. So it's all extruded aluminum and then you bought, yeah. Yeah, bought the... We also got a vacuum system for that. Okay, so for work holding? Yes, yep. yeah. So it's a, a vacuum table flat. that sucks this down. Yeah. That's why you don't have to have any clamps. Yeah. And then you've got dust collection on top. Yes. I love it. This is the main components warehouse for our product. Let's see, let's get one of these out here. So this is like a sheet metal part. Yes, made out of aluminum. Yep. This is the electronic panel. Back and so this back. is exactly as it comes from the outsource factory. Yes. Okay. Yes. And they do all the, the cutting and bending and installing all the yeah, I think all the screw uh, brackets and stuff. I know where this goes. This is like the side of the machine. Yeah, very big part. The biggest yeah. uh, injection molded we'll part. It. This is a really nice finish. It looks like yeah. aluminum. Yes. Yeah. It's Many a, people think it's aluminum. I thought it was when I first yeah. got it. The, the steel mold for these are not cheap when they're this big. Yeah. And it takes a long time for them to make it too, yeah. like weeks and weeks. We need to make two because the left right. side and the right side is not the same. Right, they're mirrors of each other. Yes, yep. it's not the same. We, yep. we need two. This is something that I think is particularly cool about the okay. Curve Era. Okay. It, I think it's very interesting. So this is your Z-height probe. Yes. This way. Oop, yes. And this one's on and ready to go. So it has a built-in laser yes. for giving the outline, which yes. is quite cool. And then it has a little tiny built-in lipo, which are which yes. are the ones we saw here, which. Yes. Some of the smallest lipos I've ever seen. Yeah. This is really yeah. clever. Yeah. This is one of the things I really like about the Carvera, yeah. that like it's done really well. And then it, when you when it sits in the machine, it wirelessly charges. Yes, it charges. So this so. is all. Do you, how do you assemble this? You glue it. Uh, with some glue. With some glue. And also yeah. some techniques. We can see. Okay, upstairs. we'll we'll see how it's made upstairs. Yes, this is the third floor. We assembly the semi-finished part or finished part in this floor and this okay. room is dedicated for the semi-finished parts and okay. also some part of the tests. So every table we have several components to assembly the force axis module. Main stock you can see. Yep. The semi-finished part is yep. the main part of the force axis module. Awesome. And, and then uh, I recognize these. <laughs> yes. This yes. is the the fan for the the main spindle. Ooh, this looks interesting. <laughs> These look like your main boards. Yeah. yeah. And the Can I check it out? Board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. We are doing the. This is just coming. Uh, recently, we are yep. doing the test. Okay. Before we put on the machine, we yep. test every every board the functionality. Yep. And you guys, this is your own board, but it's based on Smoothieware. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Which is an open source project. This is something that I think many people who aren't familiar with. 
large scale manufacturing maybe aren't aren't super familiar with. This is a test jig here that you've yes. custom built for yes. your board. Yes. And this is very representative. This is very typical of what you would see yes. in a lot of factories for a lot of different sure. uh, products. This is what, what you would call a bed of nails test jig, like yes. a pogo pin jig. So here you can see all the pogo pins. So this is called a bed of nails because it looks like a whole bunch of nails. So these are all spring loaded, little spring loaded pins and they contact all of these pads here, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so they, they touch here, and they, they have springs so that it's kind of compliant when this yes. presses down. Yes. And then you've, you've got a clamp up top, and then this jig positions it horizontally so that it's all in the right spot. Yes. This is for the lid. It, it contains several steps. Yep. The main step is uh, firstly assembly the aluminum frame first, oh, and okay. then uh, based on this frame, you can put the plastic okay. side panel on. Uh, based on the frame and all the jigs you can see, yep. we uh, make sure everything is aligned. Yeah. And what is yeah. the, is this glue here? Or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Glue, yes. So he's actually gluing it up right yes. now. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Misko is a very seasoned mechanic. It definitely yeah. looks that way. Yes, yes. Because if you uh, drop too much or too, li too little, it's not right. I have worked with this glue before, and it's okay. it's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's a, it takes some experience. Yeah. So this is where you're bending the plastic? Yes. It's a custom-made tool for bending the polling cabinet plate. Okay. For, yeah. the, for the lid? Yes. So you've got heaters here. Two yeah. heaters for two uh, positions, and uh, the aluminum profile for straightness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just off the shelf. Yeah. Uh, yes. Aluminum channel stock, yes. and this is a totally custom design. Yes. And then this is like Bakelite, like what was in the testing jig. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It can handle very high height, uh, temperature yep. and not easy to bend. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I thought this process was more like a vacuum forming or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, this is yeah, this yeah. is surprisingly simple. It's such a big, beautiful piece of plastic. So what is happening here, Josh? She is assembling the core part oh. in the wireless prop. These guys. A very thin, yeah. You can see the very thin tube. It's a yep. six millimeter diameter. Wow. You and got a ton the, crammed in there. Too. Yes. <laughs> and so this is the first step for making the wireless probes. Yes. And then the next step is over here. Oh, wow. It's soldering the FPC boards. And uh, is it, can I pick this up? Yeah, yeah. No problem. Wow, okay, this is a great example of a flexible <laughs> circuit board and what you can do with them. So flex PCBs are, are often called origami circuits and they were originally developed for cameras so that they could wrap around the outside of the camera. But yes. you guys are using this in a really clever way. This is yes. a perfect application of these. If you wanna see how these are made, go check out our flex PCB video that we did with JLC inside their Flex PCB factory. There's a lot that goes into making these. Now you were telling me earlier that you had some problems early on in the manufacturing with this. Yeah, yeah, some customer uh, feedback tell us that uh, uh, the light, yep. the dial laser and the light is a little dim. Yep. Uh, so we, uh, the most important thing is to make the whole wireless prop to be coaxial. So the light can go through. So the, everything's uh, kind of centered yeah, around that yeah, center, center axis. Around, yeah. yeah, yeah, because uh, the laser is at the top, and uh, we have a very long tube God. under that. And so if it's not coaxial, then yeah. it's kind of pointed yeah. at the wall and yes, instead of yes. down the hole. Yes, Got it. Yeah. So what's happening at this station? Yes, this station is for the spindle assembly, okay. and uh, we have our uh, already assembled spindle. He's doing the test. Okay. So we got a custom tool for that. You can see it's a 3D oh, printed. Is, yeah, yeah. Yes. Why is it so colorful? Because we are out of uh, no more filaments. <laughs> okay. We only have that yeah. one. You only time. have the rainbow filament. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is your, what you call your semi-finished warehouse? Yes, yes. So what do you keep here? You can see previously yep. assembled, but uh, not the finished machine part. Okay. Yeah. So this the, is what's coming out of like when you're assembling smaller units. Yes. Then it ends up prepared here. prepared to be assembled in the final machine. Got it, okay. Yeah, and yeah, downstairs yeah. is more completely unassembled yes, parts. Okay, material. I see yeah. here. So you've got like your entire tool bed yes. that's all put together. It's got yes. PCBs in it, it's got all these nuts in it. Yes. Got it. We didn't actually see these being put together, but okay. 
I think you can you can imagine how this would be put together. <laughs> Not, yeah, it's quite heavy. This is the main assembly area here. So this is the base. So this will be flipped this way. This is the bottom. The the feet will be on this side. This is the bottom side. Okay. This is so the this top is the side. bottom of the whole machine yes. here. Yeah. Got so it. The top side. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We need to make this uh, part to be very square. You can see. Yeah. yeah. It's right, because uh, if this isn't square, the rest of the machine isn't square. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is serious business. This yeah, is high serious. precision. Especially for the frame. Every screw will have a, yes. a torque range. And then they're working on granite slabs yes, here, yes. which are ground very, very flat, yes, so that yes. you're sure that the whole thing is level. Yes. Or, or planar, I guess, flat. Yes. Step Next, now. Uh, here we are assembling the column and uh, X beam. You can see this is assembled, assembled base frame. Yep. And we are adding the, the gantry column and the X axis beam onto this uh, frame. Got it. Okay. So this will combine our relatively whole frame. So yeah, this is can, just to make the workers' life yeah, easier. Yeah. Yeah. So you they can spin. See, oh, I see. Yeah, They're yeah. like a lazy Susan. Yeah. You screw the. Yeah. You fasten screws over here. Yeah. And then they can move the whole machine along. Like this, yes. this slides also on a, yes, yes. I guess they're a lot built up here, yes. but they can slide these. Oh, yes. that's quite cool. Yes. And that way nobody's lugging big heavy machines yes. around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very smart. Makes this easier for your workers. It makes yeah, it yeah. less hard on their bodies. So. Yeah. Because yeah. these machines get heavy. What, how much does a finished machine weigh finished once it's done? Finished machine weighs around 50 kilograms. Okay. Or even a little so bit more. So like 120 yeah. pounds, something yeah. like that. You've got rollers here yeah. for coming down the line. Yeah. But then when you want to turn the corner, yeah. you've got roller balls so that this can then slide, slide sideways. It's also very loud, but yes, yes. <laughs> that's quite cool. Next, they come here. Yes, to uh, do the next step, assembly. Put the Z axis on and do some very important calibration. OK. And so we're adding now the Z. Z axis to the gantry. Yep, and then the, the Y axis bed. Yes. Yep. And after okay. that, we will do a lot of calibration, testing, and adjustment to make sure Got it. We have uh, three axes. They are perfectly parallel and okay. uh, alignment. Yep. I noticed oh, yeah. he has oh, yeah. controller boxes here. Yeah. These are for controlling the motors? Yeah. yeah. And is this granite? This is stone? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's granite blocks here yeah. that are very, very accurate. You yeah. Very parallel, very smooth. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, he's wow. doing the that axis accuracy test. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. You've got a magic arm here, which yeah. is a... Uh, can we grab... Is there an extra one around? Yeah, so, so you've got a mag magnet at this end that gets stuck onto a piece of steel that you've yes. got bolted on there. Yes. And then this is the, the cool part, I think. This is a magic arm that all three of these joints are controlled by one knob. And so when you lock that in, it locks all of the joints. And so you can very precisely position it. Yeah. And then this is it's a dial indicator. Uh, yeah, dial indicator. Yep. And this is where it gets expensive. So this is an actual ruby at the end here, which is used because it's very, very hard. This is on the tip, and this will rub against, he's using it vertically right now on this, on this stone block. Yeah. And as this moves, even a tiny bit, the dial indicator will indicate how much it's moved. And these are 0 0.1 millimeter. Yeah, 0.01. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So 10 microns yeah, increments. 10 micron. yeah. So very, very small. And so you can use this. He's kind of moving things up and down to, yeah. to test, is it parallel to the, to the reference surface? Yeah, yeah. And then how does he adjust that if it's not? For the y-axis yeah. direction, uh, we can put some very thin spacer. Oh. In the, yeah. And shim it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, shim. yeah okay. shim it. And uh, for the x-axis direction, yeah. we can just uh, maybe lose our one tower pin. Yeah. And uh, just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. This step is also very time consuming. Yes. Maybe one or two, one or two hour for one machine. Okay. Not only you need to plug the socket, make oh. sure the wires are perfectly, perfectly arranged. Okay. So yeah. like wire yeah. management, yeah. cable yeah. management, wire making yeah. it look yeah. nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. nice and neat. So we've got cables in here and electronics. Yes. Yeah, what is what is he adding now? I'm adding the sheet metals. 
uh, inject uh, injection molded parts. Okay, so like I these think. like yeah. side plates and things. Side plates. Okay. Yes. And you can see the. Oh right. Okay, yeah. he's got like a, a thing on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Everything looks uh, as a final product. Right. So you yeah. got kind of the, the outer shell, cosmetic yes. shell around it. Yeah. So. When he's adding the spindle on, and I know this because I've removed this part, yeah. there's two more of those dowel pins, th those, dowel pins, those, yeah. those uh, locator pins. Yes. Because again, we want that to be really carefully positioned. Yeah. And so he's going to use the dial indicator again? Yeah, yeah. It tests oh. the verticality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, OK, on the, the actual tool shaft. Yes, we have a long shaft to test this. Got it. Okay, yeah. so this is just, uh, it, it's not an actual end mill. It's yeah. just a piece, uh, like a, a dowel, basically. Yeah, just a same. cylinder yeah. of yeah, 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 steel. Yeah. So yeah. right now he's testing run out. How centered axially, radially, is yeah. the, the bit? Is it, yeah. is it wobbling at all as it turns? Yeah, yeah. Now axially. Yeah. So now testing the end of it. Yeah. So then he's going to move the z-axis up and down as well. Uh, that is uh, will be tested on the next step. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, after that, he will add the lead yep. to the machine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. One of the most distinctive parts of this machine. Yes. And then what else do they do here? Did, is he just putting on the lid, or is there other stuff? Uh, these three spots, the I think they, they do the same thing. Oh. Okay. Uh, you can see every uh, accessories. Okay. So he's uh, doing the same thing as this guy? Yes. He's, yes. This guy's just a different step, yeah. but he will add a lid yes. in, later. Also, okay. Yeah. Well, let's go see testing. Okay. Here is our the testing line. Okay. Then basically we have four steps. One is to, like she's doing, he, she's uh, testing the appearance. And just, the, just yeah. to the eye, of sort of the cosmetic look of the machine. Yeah. Yes. So yes. scratches or yes. anything yes. like that. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And then next step, we will yeah. do functionality test. We'll include the three main parts. One is to set the default parameters. Okay. Yeah. This is like the, like the position, like the zero, zero yeah, coordinate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Anchor point one, two. Yep. And uh, we will do accuracy test again, double check. Okay. Accuracy. Yep. And we will do the functionality test to test the auto to changer. Okay. And the laser and other spindle, something okay. like that. Yep. Every every function we have done okay. again. He's yeah. doing the same thing this guy is, but yeah. he's just yeah. in a different, yeah. different, different part step. of the process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when the function test is finished, we will uh, run a fatigue test okay. for around eight hours every machine. Yep. Make sure nothing loose. Yep. Yeah, nothing breaks. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. yeah. Got it. Okay, let's yep. go look at that. How long are these running for? Uh, normally we run eight hours, and uh, you can see it's uh, merely nothing, but the uh, spindle, the motors are running. Everything's moving. Yeah. Boy, it's yeah. warm in here too. Yeah. You can feel it's it's five or ten degrees hotter. Yeah, yeah. So what's over here? Uh, this place is we put the fully assembled and tested machines. Okay and to be ready to move downstairs oh, for okay. cleaning and packaging. Okay, so these are like finished, finished. Yes. They're tested and ready to go. Yes. Okay, yes. got it. Oh, and they're even bolted in place. Yes. So they're like really ready to go. Yes. Why do you have them on these tiles? Because the uh, rack itself is not very flat and uh, okay. stable. So and so you don't want them warping yeah, yeah, sitting yeah, on the rack. Yeah, yeah, that will affect the accuracy. Ah, okay. I like your made in China here. Yeah, yeah. This is just for testing the whole hand printer. Oh, okay. I've not seen one of those before. I've heard of them, yeah, but okay. let's go take a look. Oh, this is pretty involved. Okay, I remember when I got mine, it was it was pretty like strapped down. This is where they're making sure that nothing moves around. Yes, yes. And also different people need different accessories. We will uh, okay. put all the things in the machine oh. based on their needs. So you've got crating material here. Yes. Oh, this is interesting. This is your crate, but they ship them flat. Yes, yes. That's fascinating. And then you just expand it out. They turn this way and expand. That's really cool. And you have these yeah. made somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. Other factories. For and they just do us. crates? Yes, only yeah. made crates. So I think one of the differences maybe in China versus the US is that in China it's very easy to have stuff outsourced. So you can yeah. go find a factory that does nothing but make crates. Yes. And have them do those and they'll do a better job than you yes. can do in-house. It'll be cheaper, etc. Yes. Whereas I think in the US you probably would end up making your own crates in-house. Okay. You'd have a saw and you'd have you know, someone sitting there nailing together crates. Yes, yeah. yes. That's yes. awesome. Yes. Oh, let's show your, your printer. Your hand printer. Yeah, where is that? 
can already tell I'm gonna like this, and that it would yeah, be very dangerous like for me a, to own one. It's like a gun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like, is it like an inkjet printer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we test it on something? Can you show us? Yeah, we can test it uh, on, on the here? ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. That is really cool. You wanna have a try? Sure. And just go slowly? Yeah. When it uh, bimp, you can start. Okay, can start. Okay, finish. Okay, that. that is really cool. This would be really dangerous for me to own. And honestly, it doesn't look like it's very expensive, the yeah, way it's made. very expensive. How much for one of these? I think uh, $500. Oh, okay, more than I like thought. Yeah. More than I thought, but I could get in a lot of trouble with one of these. It's basically, uh, it looks like an inkjet printer head, like uh, sure. on your normal home inkjet. Sure. And then it's just got rollers. And I suspect those test the speed at which you're moving it, because I wasn't very steady yeah. in moving it, and it yeah. printed really nicely. Yeah. Well, if you're the one that, that ends up with this crate that says made in China twice and a, and a part of an M, shoot me a, a picture on Twitter. I'm curious who ends up with this. <laughs> okay. Someone okay. will. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of the end of the process, yeah. right? Yeah. Stuff gets crated up, and then you ship it directly to the customer from here right now, right? Yes. And you guys are shipping machines pretty much as soon as they get ordered, right? Yes. You have excess inventory now. Yes, so. yes. Now yeah. we do that very quickly. That's exciting. Yeah. Josh, thank you so much for flying me out here to see your factory. This is fantastic. You're welcome. If you would like to learn more about the Carvera mill, or you want to buy one of your own, go to makecara.com slash strange parts. But this is not the only factory that I'm visiting this trip. I'm going to a bunch more. You can watch the next factory video right now on my streaming service, Nebula. We're going inside World Semi, the most famous manufacturer of RGB addressable LEDs that are in everything from LED strips to computer keyboards to architectural lighting. They're the manufacturer of the WS2812, AKA the NeoPixel. We'll see how they go from a bare silicon wafer to a finished LED. This is by far one of the coolest factories I've been to. Go to nebula.tv slash strange parts to sign up and watch it right now. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I waste a lot of time watching crap on YouTube. I don't dare show you my watch history. <laughs> Nebula is different. Nebula was created by creators for creators. We all wanted a place to put our best work where we didn't have to worry about finding sponsors, appeasing the algorithm, or getting demonetized. And we wanted it to be filled with really great videos and documentaries. It's a carefully curated list of really awesome, smart creators making videos for smart and curious people like you and me. Whenever I go to Nebula, I find something that's not only entertaining to watch, but teaches me something new and makes me feel like my time was well spent. There are so many amazing documentaries from independent creators like me on Nebula. If you enjoy the videos that I've done making and modifying iPhones, you should absolutely check out my friend Renee Ritchie's Impact iPhone documentary. It's an amazing retrospective about how the iPhone changed the world and frankly, all of our lives. It has interviews with tons of big creators, MKBHD, iJustine, and John Gruber, just to name a few. And Renee is one of the biggest experts in Apple history and culture there is. Or check out my friend Epos Vox's print screen series, going back and looking at all the cool analog tech of decades past, from the camcorder to the Game Boy camera. But Nebula has way more than just documentaries about technology and engineering. My buddy Sam, who runs Wendover Productions, made an incredible documentary called The Colorado River Problem, about the impending water crisis on the Colorado River, which affects all of the American Southwest. And Stephanie of Real Science, the companion channel to Brian's Real Engineering, has made an incredible series called Becoming Human, about the defining steps in human evolution. How did we start speaking? How did burial rituals mark the start of human culture? And why is sweat a superpower? And there's tons more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, I need to be honest with you for a second. The reality is that my videos tend to be pretty expensive to make. However, if you use my link to sign up for Nebula, I'll get a portion of your subscription fee for life for as long as you're a subscriber. This gives me a reliable monthly income that I can depend on, which allows me to invest in bigger and better videos like this one. For only $5 per month, you get access to not only all of my videos early, and the exclusive videos I've made just for Nebula, but also all of these other amazing documentaries and videos from over 190 other independent creators, all with zero ads or sponsored reads like this one. 
And if you use my link to sign up for a year, you can get an incredible 50% discount, which makes it only $2.50 per month. So click that link down in the description right now and sign up today. Thank you in advance for your support from not just me, but all of the amazing creators at Nebula. I'll see you again soon.